I'm making this video today uh, after three questions I received during the week. One was to do with one of my own regulators and having trouble sealing it into the, the tuba and air arms. Uh, one was to do with a, a PCP in general. The gentleman lived in the middle of nowhere and his local gun shop didn't seem to be able to provide him with the right seal or they told him it was the right seal but it didn't quite fit. He could feel it was a, a very light push but not tight enough to create a seal once the gun was pressurised. And the other one was a, a, another gentleman who got a very old air gun, I think probably from the 40s and 50s, a pump up. And he wasn't able on his gun to measure the idea of the tube down inside. Uh, it got a good, fairly good idea of what size it was but not exactly and the o-rings he had got either seemed far far too tight or slightly too loose so today I'm just going to talk a bit about o-rings and, and getting them to seal inside tubes a bit better because the, the example that anyone who spoke to me would have heard me say about is the human hair theory if you can get a piece of your wife's hair and just stick it across a seal or stick it uh, thread it through your outlet valve with a needle and then you try and fill your PCP up with air in general it will leak as fast as you can put it in so the slightest the slightest bit of a leak it might be absolutely minuscule but the air pushing past the seal depresses the seal away from the wall a little bit more and makes the, it, it's a little bit worse so if you can get the seal just to touch the wall all the way around then as soon as it gets a bite with the air, the air pressure will push it into place and the job should be a good one. So for this example, the best thing which I've spoke about a lot on the videos is obviously regulators. So this regulator is one of mine, it's fitted with the, the correct size seals and this will fit in a, an air arms, some hat sands, uh, brocock enigma. So the, let me, let me zero this. The case on that, these are about 27.4 mil, and then the seal stick out to about 28 millimeters. The tube that they're going into, as you'd have seen on the on the advert, is nominal, which means it's sort of like the average size is quoted as being 27.63 millimeters. So this goes up and down a bit, but. It's very much a, a fine balance between how much the seals stick out and getting it down the tube past the threads because obviously you don't want to damage the seal either getting it past the end lip or pushing it past the, past the threads but then you need it just enough to touch on the tube so some air guns uh, where the tube is, is smooth all fairly smooth all the way down such as on the FX's getting it in the end and then you can feed the o-ring past the screw holes with a little screwdriver carefully and you can have quite a tight field, uh, seal fit where on guns where they've got threaded ends it's a bit of a, a fine balance uh, if you watch the video on measuring the tube ID so as you know what size uh, regulator to order it speaks about the tube may look round but it could be like this slightly off center it looks okay but if you were to get a very fine gauge on it and measure it the size does vary quite a bit some of the sizes that I've been given for tubes where people have been able to measure in three or four places have varied by you know up to 0 0.25 0 0.3 of a millimeter so that is actually in engineering terms you know quite a quite a large amount uh, now with the the air, air arms seals and regulators on the advert you'll also see that it says about the the Hatsan BT65 that you know you really need to measure the inside and let me know because they they do very wild wildly some of them we've had sizes that have been nothing like the one that went out the week before the air arms have actually been very good and the gentleman who contacted me this week is only the third person ever there was a gentleman earlier this year in Venezuela and he's, he's, he was having trouble getting his to seal in the tube and then there was a gentleman that started last year but when he sent his tube up and we measured it the nominal size as I've said is 27.6 millimeters when we actually gauged his it was just just well on average 28 millimeters 
you know, I think the biggest size around the clock we measured was about 28.1, which is, is very big. So we weren't surprised it didn't fit. Now, if you find yourself in this situation, which hopefully you won't, but it's inevitable at some point somebody somebody will, or the seals are okay, but the, the tubes are very tight and you keep catching them on the thread or whatever. Here's what here's an example. So that regulator has got the correct size seals on it. These two are different. So let me look carefully. Right. He says looking carefully. This one at the front is sticking out to 28.23 millimetres. So that should be enough to fit in an oversized cylinder. But trying to find a, a, an O-ring big enough to do that can be difficult because it's probably going to be an odd size. So what you need to do if you want to enlarge, put a slightly bigger seal on is calculate the cross diameter to the diameter so you can work out how much thinner it's going to be when it's stretched into place. Now this is the seal that we'd fit on an air arms with an oversized cylinder and this is only 16 millimeters across the center but the cross section of the rubber is four millimeters so when this is placed onto the case the normal o-ring fits on with about 28 millimeters this one actually fits on with about 28.25 28.2 so that would be a fix for that uh, and then at the back here we've got the correct size that is the correct size seal so you'd think that it should measure 28 millimeters but it doesn't it's slightly over 28 millimeters that's knocking on as well for 28.2 and we accomplish this with a simple aid of PTFE tape which you'd get from your average hardware store or plumber's shop. This is quite safe to use, very universal, used in all sorts of applications to do with air, hydraulics and similar sorts of applications. And then on this regulator, this back seal measures 28.27, but the seal again is completely the wrong size seal for the job. That is only a 3mm section seal. So that extra bulk has been packed out with six, six turns of PTFE tape. So that's brought it up past the required size. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're having a job to get a regulator, a valve body, uh, an end cap that, that fits in, you, know, you fill a valve end cap or anything to, to fit, or if you can't get exactly the size, right size seal because the gun's been altered over the years, then you can either calculate and work out to use a different size seal with a larger cross section to give a little bit more bulk as we've demonstrated on the front of this regulator or use PTFE tape. Now PTFE tape isn't expensive, I didn't know exactly how much it was so I went out and purchased this packet last week from a local DIY shop in the UK and that cost 32 pence. I think this roll of PTFE tape. I think I only had two since I started working with air guns, PCP air guns, and that's about 20 years ago. And there's still some on there, and I've used it for all sorts of applications on motorbikes, cars, my airline in the workshop, all sorts of things. So you shouldn't ever get through a hell of a lot of it for 32p. So the other uh, tip is if you're getting, want to get something to try and seal a bit better, it's just not getting that initial bite is to put plenty of the silicon o-ring grease around there make sure it's rubbed in rubbed in well so that when you start to fill the gun up with air the grease and the o-ring move and as long as the silicon seal plugs the gap for a split second the o-ring should then expand and hold itself into place i'll now try and give you a, a practical demonstration of using the ptfe tape 